five big questions facing the Alberta Progressive Conservative Party. I'm Janet Brown. I'm a public opinion research consultant. Some people call me a pollster. Some of my relatives ask me about my opinion on chintz fabric because they think I'm an upholsterer, but that's, a <laughs> that's another topic. But I conduct polls and market research, and that's how I make my living. I think what's at stake is just maintaining their status as the naturally governing party. Um, you know, they've had some stiff competition in the last few years with the emergence of the Wild Rose Alliance and some strong performances from the opposition in the House. But really, all the polls continue to point to the PCs in first place um, in terms of voter preference. So um, I think they just need to continue to maintain that status as the natural, naturally governing party. I guess the biggest unknown is who the next leader is going to be. And is that next leader going to sort of like press the progressive side of progressive conservative? Are they going to press the conservative side? Or are they going to find that magic formula where they can balance out both the progressive and the conservative nature of the party? I don't think at this point. I mean, these early stages, who's in the race right now? I don't think it's a coronation. I don't think it's, it's anybody's expecting one candidate to walk away with it. Um, no, I don't think it's anybody's to win or anybody's to lose right now. Okay, first, I think the big issue is leadership. I think it's really about finding a leader who can articulate an exciting vision for Albertans. Um, a leader who can engage enough Albertans to buy PC membership cards and vote for them. And I think right now the PCs are just craving for strong leadership as are Albertans in general. So I really think it's about leadership. And then underlying that is health and education and how um, how these candidates use their leadership flair to articulate those things. But I think the big thing is vision and ideas and strong leadership. And then conversely, like what's the most overrated issue? Well, I think the most overrated issue is fiscal conservatism. Um, I think it's not going to come down to, you know, who's a fiscal hawk and who's not a fiscal hawk. Albertans are more sophisticated than that. We all have mortgages. We all borrow money when you know, the shingles fly off our house, you know, there's good debt and there's bad debt. Um, really, it's not about keeping our taxes as low as possible. We're looking for our tax dollars being spent in a responsible way. You know, we're looking for uh, somebody who's going to be fiscally responsible. But the idea of, you know, you're for a debt, you're for a deficit. Um, I don't think Albertans are quite as concerned about that, just as they are about, you know, the quality of the spending choices being made. Um, not to be sarcastic, but not screw up. I mean, they are the first place party right now. They have been for the last 40 years. Um, I think they have to be careful um, not to elect too radical a leader at either end of the spectrum. Nobody sort of way too progressive or way too conservative. Um, I think if they just have a good solid candidate, um, that, that's probably the best thing for the Conservative Party. You know, conventions, leadership races, they do one of two things. They bring a party together, they unite a party, or they will, will pull a party apart. Um, well, if you look at sort of uh, the federal Liberal Party in 2006 when they elected Stefan Dion, that was a really contentious convention that they had. They're, the party was really splintered after that one. Um, I think if the PC party has that kind of an all-out um, you know, divisive fight on their hands, um, it could be very dangerous for them. But to, if they run a good, clean fight, um, so, show some strong leadership, show that they can come together after the process is over, um, that'll be very important for them in the next election.